difference around your team the first game week? Well, first off, I want to say congratulations. Okay, 40 years in this profession. Um, I know congratulations on the voice of the Vandals. Trans you know, transition into something else, I think it'll be extremely fun. So congratulations to you, and I know it's your last week. Uh, for us, it's... It's just so, there's so much excitement in the building this morning, just knowing it's here. You can talk about it being here. You can visualize it being here in January. You know, when you're working out in the snow, this is why you do it. But to finally be here, there's just so much excitement for our team, our coaching staff, hopefully our university, our fan base. It's just all coming. The sights and sound of football are here. And what an opportunity that's afforded to us. I've always felt game one is a rules and principles game. You know, I... I don't know what they're going to do, right? It's a new team. It's a new time. It's consistent coaching staff. But at the end of the day, the correct effort and energy and execution on our part always leads to success. So that's going to be the focus of the week. Uh, we take down kind of the long extended practices, make sure these guys are sharp, and we need to peak at 12 o'clock come Saturday. You talked about being different. You don't know what teams are going to do. So what is a coach, obviously winning, but what is a coach looking for out of his team that first game? Well, I think you got to look at our team, too, as a, in a broad sense. Uh, we have a young team. You know, we have a lot of new starters at a lot of different positions. You know, my biggest thing to these guys is going to be go out there and play. You've done this a million times. I could pull up your high school highlights of every player. You've all had success in this game. Lean on that. You know, there will be nerves. Uh, but that nerves cannot, you know, cause tension and lead to hesitation. If we play fast, we are going to make mistakes. That's okay. The greatest teams learn from week one to week two. I want our guys out there playing at max capacity, not thinking and making really correctable mistakes. I think you get in trouble in game one when you're not communicating, you're not playing with great effort, you're overthinking the situation. There'll be plenty of adjustments going on during the game. That's fine. Okay, but that can't control, you know, and hindering us from playing at max capacity. Uh, now that we've gotten to the season now and relatively uh, quiet compared to last August, uh, back in July at the media day, there was a, a saying, welcome to the fight, you know. Mm -hmm. um, what does that mean to you as we go forward into this uh, new season for Washington State football? Well, let's send out my second congratulations. Yeah, I'm excited for you, Alex. Obviously, last week covering here in the media mecca of Spokane, and I'm excited about it. You're going to the Midwest, Detroit. Okay, obviously, uh, congratulations to you as well. You know, I think the biggest thing, you know, I think that whole centered around, you know, we have a year where the spotlight is on us. People do want to see what happens to the Cougs, what happens to the Pac-12. Uh, my mindset to the team and our organization is this, we can't worry about all that. You know, everything since January 1 has been all about us, our preparation, our mentality, and the things that we can really control. And I think the rest of it takes care of itself. So I think Saturday's the first moment I've talked to our team a lot our identity will be on display, right? 2023 is wiped. If you played in 2022, that is gone. This team's identity and blueprint will be on display, and that is still yet to be created. And I think that's an exciting you know, piece for a coach because you think you know what you have. Uh, you've worked so hard for a desired outcome. Now see what team you actually have out on that field against a different colored jersey. So there's uh, tons of excitement and tons of learns to be had, and I'm excited to find out who this team really is. And then with the first couple of series of the game, you know, the, like you said, nerves, you know, can yeah. pop up with especially the younger players. What are you hoping to see in those first 15 minutes or so? I think a level of physicality that we've demanded for the last eight months, a level of toughness, an execution of finish. You know, that is what the great teams do. You know, uh, as you're feeling things out and you're sorting through the schematic things, that has to be the staple of how we play. And we've talked about it so much. Like I said, the identity needs to get to realization. You know, so we talked about getting everything to application. Uh, that's what we do here. That's what coaches are all about, trying to find ways to make sure that we're seeing that through our guys and just excited for them. You know, these guys are here for a reason. Uh, we're excited about trying to attempt to go 1-0 every week. That's our uh, mission. And every opportunity demands our best. So that's what Saturday is about. 
I guess I'm the only one not getting <laughs> congratulated today. But, um, Coach, we've covered the big sky for a few years. Now yeah. we've seen Dante Saturé have some yeah. otherworldly performances. Um, but just from your defense perspective, going against a dual threat guy like John every day, how much does that give you confidence heading into a game against a guy like that? Well, I'll give you some context. I have plenty of connections in the big sky. Um, call around about Coach Barnum and his offensive prowess. It's real. Uh, and the way he utilizes his personnel every year very uniquely. You know, I got a chance to go up against them in 2021, and they had the quarterback that could throw it all over the place and scramble. Uh, 15 is a unique talent. You can see it in the Oregon game, uh, how much he plays off script. Uh, they really neutralized Oregon with the option, which can be a whole different deal. Unbalanced formations, trick plays. Yeah, they try to get the defense on their heels, really, in everything that they do. You know, I know 17, you didn't get a chance to see him at tailback too much last year because he got hurt. Dynamic with the ball in his hands. So uh, everyone you talk about when you're talking about this Portland State team, well-coached, disciplined, and very creative offensively to get you on your heels. And I know you guys just named your captains last week. How much do you think those young guys can lean on those guys heading into this first week, especially right around kickoff when, when the nerves are maybe a little bit higher? Yeah, and we'll kind of really get into our first captain's meeting this week, but even for some of those guys, it's their first time starting. So excited about really the makeup and the mentality of that group. And the reason that those six have been named to lead this team is because this logo means something to them. And I think we saw that for the last eight months. I was beyond convicted to name those six the captains of this football team because they've earned it every day. I have a crazy level of trust in those six guys that when things get hard, they're going to do what's best for the team. And they're going to tell everybody in that locker room what they need to hear. And that's exciting for me as a head coach to know that that's happening, especially in year three of our program, and they're going to drive our culture. No, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, know the depth chart, the two deeps are coming out later today. How tough were some of those decisions, you know, when you're kind of going through and you're thinking about the oars, you're thinking about the guys that you're listening to, the ones and twos, obviously knowing guys are still going to play, but were there any decisions that really stood out as being extra difficult? Well, to keep you on your toes, I think we probably put more oars than we ever have. Um, I went Mike Leach style on that one. Um, so it's just one of those things where some of it's still going to be played out and, you know, not – now we're using this first game as some sort of exhibition game, but like guys got to go out there and perform and we're going to evaluate this. And I think we got a lot of guys on a similar plane. I would say running back, I would say edge, um, you know, some of the corners, like uh, th these guys, the receivers, this stuff has to be sorted out on game day too. So the guys that perform have the hot hand will be in there. We'll continue to adjust as we go. Um, but there is a starting point. I thought only 11 guys can break the huddle the first time. Uh, that will be a starting point, but the 11 guys that finish every week, that's a big-ass deal. So we're going to keep working through that. Until you list a Heisman finalist as a no, I don't know if it's Coach Leach's level yet. That's right. Um, that's right. You know, it, it kind of, just, again, speaking in terms of some past coaches, you know, Coach Price would always try and get a second quarterback in for a drive or two. Is there a, an idea or a, uh, an attempt to try and get Zevia drive in this game? There's only a focus on doing everything we need to do to win. And when that time comes, he'll be ready. He'll be ready the whole season when that time comes. Right now, our focus is John, the one offense, going out there and performing for 60 minutes. And until we feel like, uh, you know, we need to put Zevi in, we're, we're focused on John and what he needs to do to execute for 60 minutes. And then outside of uh, Lili and Carlos, everyone expected to be available or anyone uh, going to be out this week? Um, you know, we found out last week that Jamari Colson is going to be out for an extended period of time. You know, so we'll keep you guys updated really as we go through that. Is that an injury or what's what's the status? Yeah, it's an injury, and we'll we'll kind of keep you updated. Um, with John, like, what do you want to see out of him in his first start? Yeah, I mean, you know, we'll communicate a lot with John as we go throughout this week. There'll be tons of excitement. I mean, how how do you not right? You work your whole life for this big moment, um, just to play within himself. You know, he doesn't need to be anybody else than John Mateer, and I've told him that a million times. That's good enough. It really is. And if he plays within our system, we've surrounded him with a ton of playmakers to get the ball out, and then when it's time to go and be him, go do that, right? So we're going to use John and all his strengths, and that's running, that's throwing, that's moving the pocket. It's a million different things. So you'll see the complete arsenal from John Mateer game one because we got to see him respond in every area. 
uh, Jamori being out, who do you think, or, or I guess who do you hope will kind of step up in his place? Well, Ethan O'Connor's ready. You know, I think if he's seen that through the course of fall camp and his playmaking ability needs to be high, but he's still young. You know, he's a freshman corner who's going to make mistakes, and that's fine. Uh, Stephen Hall, one of our captains, has been an amazing leader for that room and really drives, you know, all the behaviors that those guys have. So i uh, excited about that. And then Warren Smith has got to be ready. Jalen Edmond, Kenny Worthy, guys that have been working their tail off behind the scenes. It's just another example. You never know when your number is going to be called. Obviously, last year from game number one, even being a transfer, Kyle Williams came out and it seemed like the connection was there right away. How have you kind of seen between him and John that connection develop up until now? And where do you expect it to be in game number one? Well, it was good to see Saturday. You know, I know the media wasn't there. But we did a mock game, and those guys hit on a couple big deep balls. I know it's against scouts, but the rhythm, the timing, the visualization of seeing it happening uh, is a really positive thing. And I think those guys have worked extremely hard together, you know, in the summer when it wasn't, you know, structured practices to make sure they're on rhythm and on timing. And we'll use Kyle in a very different role than he was just last year. He won't just be sitting out at X receiver. And I think that's exciting for him and John. And, you know, Kyle's our greatest playmaker. We've got to find ways to get him the ball. But his greatest strength is the vertical stretch game. It just is. And we need to utilize that strength in many different ways against all kinds of different matchups. So excited about the chemistry that those guys have put together. Um, but as far as a whole offensive unit and wide receiver crew, you know, we still got work to do to make sure that we're executing uh, the way we need to be to win. And then obviously, you know, as a player, especially those that are new, go into another year, you expect to see more development, better connection. But with um, coaches and specifically, you know, offensive and defensive coordinator Ben and Jeff, how have you kind of seen that full off season, that extra year now here at Washington State, uh, maybe help improve communication there or your, even your relationship with them? No, I think that's a really great question, and it's really true. You know, I think Ben has really grown uh, as a coordinator. I think he's really grown as a leader. And I think you can only get that type of growth through some hard times. You know, there were some times we underachieved last year, and I think it allowed us to take a step back, see where we need to get better at, and he's responded every step of the way. I'm really proud of him because I think as a coach, we have the same choice the player has to make when you don't get what you want. So I've been proud of him as a leader. How thorough we've been to this and every game plan has been really exciting to see. I think Coach Caster has been just phenomenal for Coach Arbuckle and what he's really brought to the table. And I think Jeff's more comfortable with our system and what we're asking him to do. I think anytime you come in, not that you're running someone else's system, but you kind of are. And now that you understand the ins and outs of it, all the checks, the balances, the corrections for different things. I just think it makes you as a play caller way more convicted in what you're doing. And I think you'll see that in our players this year. What's kind of the message you have kind of for the fan base to, to come out? I mean, obviously you want them at every game, but maybe even more so this year as you guys are kind of trying to prove a point And as you said, yeah. kind of, um, you know, embrace that fight. What's kind of the message to the, the fans uh, to come out on Saturday? I expect to sell out, you know, and the reason – I, the reason I say that is is, two, is twofold. We get six games a year that our fans get to come out and celebrate this team, you know, because it's been a year, Jamie. It's been a year, right? And I've, you know, spent a year, you know, seeing people on Twitter complain, right? That does nothing. Showing up, investing, being in the seats, being there for four quarters, that's how you show the appreciation for our players staying here for that logo. That's what it means to them, right? These guys could have went anywhere during all this chaos and they're here for the Coug, for the team, for the fan base. It's a call to the students. That's the place to be on Saturday at 12 o'clock. Pack your side, be loud, uh, and everyone else, season ticket holders, be there. This is an exciting brand of football. This is a new team. We need you. So who are we as a fan base? We can't pick and choose. Yeah, I know everyone's excited about the Tech game, but there's a big game before that, and it's Portland State at noon this week. So we don't leave the state of Washington for the first four games. What an opportunity as a Coug to be here and do something special, and it starts with Portland State. It does, and that's a challenge to everybody. We'll learn a lot about our people, our fans, um, at this time after the game on Saturday. Uh, maybe he's still looking like a week two at this point. 
Right now, um, just got some positive news about him kind of passing uh, the final uh, step uh, in his rehab process. But I want to pump the brakes, right? It'll be a process to get him back. But this is a big moment, okay? So he kind of gets mostly the all clear. Uh, I would say it's more like a two-week progression, more towards the uh, Apple Cup game. And even then, it'll be at some sort of limited capacity as we build him back in. I'm in charge of his future. I've told him that every time, but this is a major step in his return. And just seeing old 7-9 out there in his pads doing team, you can lift my spirits. I know that, right? So his teammates will feel the same way. And just really excited for that kid because he's put in a ton of work and has, ton of, has had a ton of adversity through his career here, and he's ready to capitalize. And, and we did the right thing for him and his team by getting this really taken care of. Um, but just such exciting news that he can kind of really start that progression back. But I would say more targeted for the Apple Cup.